Hey guys, this is Priyanka. In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to display the duration to reach your destination, and you also displayed the distance. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to display the directions. So the layout is going to be exactly same. When the user will click on the to button, it is going to display the directions instead of the duration. You can also display both, but I'm just going to display the directions now. So open the data parser dot Java file. And here we created the pass directions method earlier and here we were fetching the legs array now we need to fetch only one value that is polyline so polyline is basically a representation to store multiple latitude and longitude values I'll put a link in the description box below if you want to learn more about how they encode the polyline but I'm not going to explain it here if you want a separate tutorial on that then you can leave a comment so here first there is a route array then there is a leg array then there is a step array inside that and the step array contains multiple steps so basically if you want to go from location a to location d then first you'll go from a to b then maybe you'll turn left then from b to c then you'll turn right and then you'll go from c to d and then you are at your destination so basically the steps array will contain all those paths a to b then b to c and then c to d and then each path will give us one polyline so basically the polyline is useful when you want to display the exact path so if there is a curved path it will give us the exact representation of that you can just fetch the start location and end location of each path and then display it. But if there is a curved path, then you'll get a straight line from the start and the end value. So it will not be the exact representation. So here we need to fetch the steps array first. So write dot get JSON object zero dot get JSON array and write steps in double quotes. So here in the pass directions method, instead of legs, we are fetching the steps array. Then we are going to create a method. So write public string get path. It will get one single path that is from A to B. So here we are going to give JSON object Google path JSON. Here we are going to store a polyline. So write string polyline equals Google path JSON dot get JSON object polyline and polyline contains a points string. So write get string points. And there is an unhandled exception. So click alt enter and click on surround with try catch. Now this will give us just one paths polyline. We need all the paths polylines. So I'm going to store them in a array of strings. So here I'm going to return this string and I'm going to create one more method which will return array of strings. Get paths. And here we are going to give this steps array as the input. So write Google steps JSON and here I'm going to create a string array polylines equals new string and for the length of the string we can write int count equals Google steps JSON dot length and we can give this value here. So basically it will count the number of objects in the steps array and that will be the exact same length for the polylines array and we are going to use a for loop so write for i equals zero i less than count i plus plus and here we are going to call get path method for each ith value and we are going to store that value in the polylines strings array so write polylines i equals 
get path and here we are going to give google steps json dot get json object i and again there is an unhandled exception so click alt enter and click on surround with try catch so after storing all the values we are going to return this polylines array since we added this uh, try catch block this is unreachable so i'm just going to declare it here string polyline and then remove this from here so that error will be gone and then we need to initialize it so i'm going to initialize it uh, as null string or empty string and here instead of calling the get duration method i'm going to call get paths method so here we'll pass the direction we'll fetch the steps array and then we'll call the get paths method and here we will fetch each individual object and then we will pass it to get path method and we'll fetch each polyline from the individual object and we'll return them. And here we are returning strings array. So remove the hash map from the return type and write string array as the return type for the pass directions method. So this class is done. Now open the get directions data class. And here in the on post execute method, I removed everything. Just two statements are there data parser parser equals new data parser and directions list equals parser dot parse directions this directions list was hash map before now we are going to make it as a string array so write string array directions list and here we are fetching the array after this i'm just going to create another method to display the directions so write display directions and pass this array here now let's create that method so write public void display directions and here i'm going to take a string array directions list i'm going to create a count variable to store the size so write directions list dot length and then using for loop we are going to display all the values so write i equals 0 i less than count i plus plus as we need marker options to create a marker we need polyline options to create a polyline so polyline options will give us the values and also the color and the width of the polyline so write polyline options options equals new polyline options and then options dot color i'm going to set it to color dot red then options dot width i'm going to set it to 10 and then options dot add all you can add a single value or you can add all values here i'm going to use add all and here i'm going to use polyutil class which decodes the polyline so write polyutil dot decode and pass the ith polyline that is directions list i and then we can add this polyline to our map so write m map dot add polyline and pass these options here so this is done we can run our application and test it now so i'm just going to connect my phone and make sure that you have usb debugging enabled and just click on the run button so first it will display your location so just click on the marker and then drag it to set your destination and then click on the two button so it, you can zoom in and see that it is displaying the directions and it is displaying the curved line correctly so this is it for today thank you for watching this video I know many of you guys were waiting for this video for a long time uh, but my computer screen stopped working and I had to get it replaced so that's why I couldn't even check your course if you have emailed me now I'm going to reply to all the emails so I apologize for that and 
Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Bye.